Well, hey there, it's Alka and Jen, and in this episode of the Creative and Ambitious Entrepreneur Podcast, we are talking about the mistakes to avoid when naming your Zazzle store. And it's going to be a great one because mm-hmm. if you don't do this correctly at the beginning, then unfortunately, if you build up your store and um, you've got a lot of products in there, and then something happens, like either you realize it's the wrong name, yeah. or actually even worse, it gets copyright. Like there's someone complains because it's actually a copyrighted name, then you're you're going to get all of that work taken away from you because they're going to shut your store down, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate, and we don't want that to happen to you. So, when you first start on Zazzle, or even if you're starting a new store on Zazzle, then you've already been on Zazzle for a while, you just think, okay, I'm going to start a new store. We're going to go over some. Uh, pointers and tips that you should consider every time you create another store on Zazzle. So let's get started with some of those. Sure. So first of all, we want you to think about what is the purpose of your store? What are you going to sell and what is your niche or niche? Um, And we will be talking about this in a later episode or a different episode of the podcast. But In general terms, what will your store's purpose be and what were you going to sell? Are you going to be a designer as yourself, like for example, Jennifer Clark Designs, or are you going to make up a store name that has nothing to do with my name, but it's something interesting that would be for the purpose of your brand? Um, Let's say like Fuzzy Paw Creations, because I want to create some really fun dog related items. And so you have to think about what you're going to be selling and what kind of vision and direction you want your store to go in first. And this is obviously very important when naming your store because you want to name your store something very similar to the vision of your store. You're not going to name your store something completely different, first of all, because your customer won't understand the connection between the name and what you're selling. And then also, Later on, if you do decide to change your name, your URL for that store will always be the same. And this is what what Elko was talking about was that afterwards, if something happens, you either are, you know, you have all of those products and all that hard work that's gone into the store and now you can't actually use that URL or you want to change your store name and then your URL where you're actually directing your uh, customers to doesn't fit with the store name that you want to use now. So the first thing, what is your vision or what are you going to be selling in your store? And play around with what kind of things um, are going to resonate with your customer and how you can portray the types of designs in your store name. (laughs) Yeah, and you want to make it something relatable so that they can actually understand right from your store name what it is that they're going to get when mm-hmm. they get to your store. Um, as John said, something to do with dog products then makes total sense with the fuzzy paws. And so then the next part though is a matter of checking to see if someone else has already mm-hmm. used that, especially um, not just on the Zazzle Marketplace, but is it copyrighted by someone else on the internet or someone else as a physical store? So the place to, because Zazzle, for example, does sell f- to the, for the majority of customers, they are focused in on the US market, then you can at least start there because every country actually has trademarks. And so uh, the most important thing is, is to make sure that within the US based market, to, at least to start, that's where you're going to check to see if your design or your name that you've just come up with for your store isn't already something that someone else has trademarked. Mm-hmm. A nice way to do that is an easy way is to go to the U.S. trademark um, site, and it's a little bit of a, a little easy, a little bit more difficult to uh, just get there by a URL. So we can't tell you that. But what you can do is you can Google U.S. trademark, and then something will come up. You click on that. Or you can even say TES, T-E-S, as well as U.S. trademark right in the search bar. And then that will bring up the U.S. government trademark site. And then on that site, you can go and click on a couple of buttons to get to something called the like the TESS search. It's basically, uh, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's T-E-S-S. And that's very easy once you put in that to find that and get the click and the link to this search engine that allows you to search every single trademarked item that has been registered by the onto the US government site. And then what you can do next is choose the word search so that you don't have to worry about images as well. 
and then you can do a quick search. And mm -hmm. It's super easy, actually. It just feels uncomfortable and weird because it's such a weird site, but also it's like it's not very user friendly. But when you get there and you just go, okay, I want a word search, click put in my word, and then you're going to get a ton of results. The results will be very interesting because you're going to see if um, anything that has been registered as a trademark that has the word or a piece of your phrase of your store name in it. And so then you can just go through the entire list and you can see on the left hand side all the names, then you can see more information in the middle and then on the right hand side it'll give you some really cool information like is it active, is it uh, not active, what specifically is it uh, trademarked for, and then you can click on each of those uh, entries and see a little bit more information about what the trademark's all about. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to you to decide whether you need a lawyer uh, to move on an, in addition to this, or uh, it's kind of clear that there is nothing being used in with the words that you want to use for your store name. And if you feel that you're not sure, then double check with a lawyer. It's going to be so much better than realizing a, you know, a year later that someone has mm -hmm. come and told you to, as or Zazzle uh, has been told, that they um, now need to take your store down because you're using a copyrighted name. Yeah. And we don't want that for you. Mm -hmm. So do that quick check. It's super easy. Go to the, just basically search uh, US government trademarks and test, T-E-S, and then it'll come up with that site and you will be able to do a quick word search and see what's happening. And like I said, if you're not sure, this is the place where you can spend a bit of money to double check that your uh, store name is going to actually be legitimately fine to use as you build it because we have a vision for you to make the store name your brand yeah. and your store that you have for 10 to 15 years and you want to consistently have that make money for you. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Now if all you do find that there's a copyright infringement issue then you have to change the name and again you might need to speak to a, a lawyer to double check to see if you're far enough away from the trademark in order for you not to get um, a cease and desist uh, letter which is not something you yeah. it's very scary if you get yeah. something like that you feel like you've just really like broken the law but you have and so we want to make sure you don't feel that um, have that experience and really the main thing is is you don't also want that competition right why would you want to be, have the same store name or brand name as someone or a company that's already out there that you would then not ever you know be able to um, have the customer be uh, able to distinguish between your brand and this other person's brand or this other company's brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the big, uh, like the serious note of this. <laughs> How about some of the funnier and sillier parts of it? Like, well, I Gen thought Clark it was, 78. yeah, <laughs> I thought that it was really interesting that you said we have a vision for you because yeah. we do have a vision of you having this Zazzle store for years to come because we personally have been working on Zazzle for 13 years and counting. And if you asked me back then if I thought that I would be with the same Zazzle store from now 13 years in the future, I would have like looked at myself 13 years in the future and I said, no way. Um, I didn't realize that what I was building back then is what has become to be today. And so we want you to, first of all, have a store name that sticks with you, feels good with you, feels good with your vision, and feels good with everything that you want to do going forward in the future. And is also obviously legal. You don't want to, a couple years from now, be dinged like you said, and be told that you need to be uh, taken down. But in terms of like funny things that have happened, we've done all of these mistakes that we're um, talking to you about, except copyright, because we did our research. Mm -hmm. But we thought at the beginning that we could just open up a Zazzle store uh, for fun and then make some products and that our store name actually wasn't going to be shown by any or seen by anyone. And so I open up my first Zazzle store and I thought that it was kind of like an email, like or your username. username, right? Because we are, back then you would create your hotmail accounts or your um mess the what was it the windows messenger account and so i use one of the account names that i had created for myself on one of these other websites and so it was gem clark 78 and i started to make products there i started to actually sell things there i started to become a little bit more professional and then i realized that i couldn't change my store name and i was like i don't want to be known as gem clark 78 <laughs> even like 78 why 78 and so 
that was my mistake. The store still exists today and the products are horrendous, but that was sort of my stepping stone to figuring out where I wanted to go in the future. Um, for you, you might have actually created a store just like Jen Clark 78 and there's no shame. Um, everybody <laughs> m might have done it, but the, the, the most important thing is, is that you realize that it's not actually professional, unfortunately, where you have a username sort of name to your Zazzle store, unless that's part of your brand and what you want to get across because if there's a number or something that makes it look like you use your name and that's actually your vision then go for it but if you're just starting out on Zazzle and you're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't I would stick to not making a, a, a username store name because if it starts to pick up and become popular and you have some really great selling products there then you can't actually change the URL. You're always able to change the store name that shows up in your homepage, um, which we talked about in the branding episode of the podcast, but the URL will always be the same. So sometimes there may be a huge disconnect. If for example, I needed to change my store name from Jen Clark 78 to Fluffy Paw Prints, um, when they go to my URL, it's still going to be Jen Clark 78. And so my customers are not going to understand the connection between this and that. Um, only if I make it very clear that I'm Jen Clark 78. <laughs> yeah. And so there are some workarounds, but it's, it's tedious. Mm -hmm. and, and why not just start with the proper store name to start with? Yeah. And also some things to remember is try not to have, um, like, other, like even Zazzle tells you don't put in certain um, like um, uh, like dashes, commas, yeah. and uh, punctuation and number signs and ampersands because that will mess around with the URL because that's basically what you are doing. You're creating mm -hmm. a URL for your store. Yeah. And um, so you want to have something that's easy for the customer to be able to type in as well as for it to be... Um, something that's not going to be misunderstood yeah. by the customer and they can't find your store. Yeah, and for, well, talking about that, try and avoid using double letters together, right? So mm -hmm. if you wanted to have, um, let's say, uh, gen neutral designs, there's two ends there, and sometimes people will mistake and actually not add the second N or they'll add more ends than necessary. Um, or if you have a like a first and a last name that start and end with, or end and start with the same letter, uh, things like that. And make sure that the words that you use are easily spelt by people, <laughs> because I know that it seems quite silly, but if the, like the majority of the population doesn't know how to spell the word necessary or the word turquoise, and if you're using hard -er words in your store name, sometimes you're gonna lose out on potential customers just because they don't know how to spell it properly, which is not, you know, anything to against your brand. It's just the, making it easy for the customer to find you. Yeah, and also things like knowing that um, you uh, you choose the American spelling mm -hmm. rather than um, a British spelling or Canadian spelling. Yeah. And with the O um, instead of like favor is O U R yeah. in Canada, but uh, in the States it's O R. So things like that are always something you need to be mindful of when using um, the like figuring out your t your store name. Yeah. And that way, you're, as Jen said, the main main thing is always to see what could the customer mess up and how could they be more frustrated if you do this as a choice rather than do some like choose the other choice which is much yeah. more simple. The oh, I had one more thing, unless okay. you wanted to go, go now. Go for it. Um, when we first started out on Zazzle, we thought that we had to create multiple different stores for different oh, yeah. uh, types of products. So we had a business <laughs> store, we had a stationery store, we had, actually breaking it down even further, we had a birthday store, we had a bachelorette store, we had um, a... Uh, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. <laughs> I think I even had a candle store at one point. So you have to think about what, oh, this is going back to your vision of your store, if you're so at right now that you're only going to make birthday cards and that's it I'm probably going to blow your mind and say you probably want to explore and change up um, your designs a little bit and actually uh, use some of the other templates that Zazzle offers because they offer over a thousand different products for you to customize and po uh, post for sale in your store and when you create a store name that says like birthday card designs 
then when you actually branch out and want to design something other than birthday cards, it also looks a little bit funny to your customer and there might be a disconnect there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that brings up another topic is we actually recommend only one or two stores. Mm -hmm. We've done the multiple store route Mm -hmm. and it uh, it doesn't work because there's so many things that you need to do and be professional about on all of these stores separately. And unfortunately, uh, there used to be a time where that was a logical route to go. But now with all the things that Zazzle asks you to do to make your storefront look nice and also anything to do with outward social market, like social media marketing now makes much more sense if you have one or if you want two stores and then use that store more effectively by having the different categories that you use for Mm -hmm. store categories be those sub stores that you would have normally made as individual stores and uh, and that solves that problem that jennifer was talking about about how you may all of a sudden decide that you want to do more than just birthday cards and that that would be more um, amenable just to add another category rather than to create an entirely new store i even had like a store that literally said ipod something or yeah other. and it's like okay well ipods aren't even like really that's impo- true inter- i don't think interesting people anymore. have ipods yeah. anymore <laughs> yeah and we thought at the time it was like okay this is the big deal this yeah. is the newest thing ipods everyone's yeah. gonna want one but we don't want to have it messed up with all these other products we're selling let's just make an ipod store yeah and it's like um yeah, well, that thing's dead in the water now. Yeah. And so what we really want you to focus on is keeping your options open, create a store that's going to have the ability to be flexible mm-hmm. with a store name that's going to be more um, oh, generalized so that you can make sure that you are uh, able to tap into all these other niches if you want to expand. Yeah. And But if you do th- do things like Jen's example with the paw prints or the fluffy paws, <laughs> then that's okay because that means you're very much focused on dogs mm-hmm. and or maybe even anything else that has um, paws and fur (laughs) and so you've got quite a big range and Mm -hmm. so that is truly uh, still a really great choice for a name and a store because you're not limiting yourself Mm -hmm. whereas uh, yeah the birthday card examples or the candlestick store (laughs) yeah yeah much more um specific and yes. less opportunity for you to expand yeah so that's that's the end of our store is there anything else i think that's about it but i think you need to pick a store name that really resonates with you and that you're going to stick with for a long time if that's what you want to do um, we do tell our students that they can open up a store to go through the profit by design academy just to get the right motions to set up their store properly and they can either stick with it or they create a new store afterwards um, Um, You're always able to create new stores, but as we mentioned before, we do recommend you stick with one or two because after that it gets very overwhelming and you're not able to actually pay attention and put the right branding or be consistent with your branding to show your customer that this is a true store and this is who you are as a designer and what you sell on Zazzle um, rings through with all of your, your branding, whether that be just on Zazzle or within external stuff like social media. Um, because ultimately you are growing a business, you're growing something that is professional and people buy from you. It's not just a thing on the internet or on the computer screen. People receive products from you and they want them to be looking and feeling professional from the touch point, which is on your store homepage. Mm-hmm. And from your store the, name as well. And then this, <laughs> yeah, and then the confidence of knowing that they bought it from this store yeah. because that is truly what they're going to associate mm-hmm. um, your product with because every single product when it's showcased right next to it is your store logo and the store name yeah. and so all of that ties together and allows your customer to feel like they're buying it from a true store just like Barnes and Noble or mm-hmm. something else and so think about it at that level because you deserve to uh, think that you're possible it's possible for you to sell at that level mm-hmm. John and I have sold over 15 million dollars worth of product oh, that's like a department store <laughs> yearly yeah. and um, you know sales revenue so don't underestimate the uh, significance of what your store name does and what you offer in that store but starting with the store name 
you have to have something that really can be uh, indicative of what the customer knows they're going to get when they come to your store and then every product is going to have that next to their the like your store name will be next to the product on the Zazzle marketplace and that along with your logo for the store name is going to be part of the package that allows your product to feel like the, like the customer going to feel like they should buy this product because they see the store name the product itself that's high quality and together as a package they're going to feel comfortable that this is a good brand to buy from yeah all right so that's it for us thank you so much for listening to our podcast and we'll see you in the next episode bye